Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, we examine a center console catamaran that offers superior stability and a surplus of room for its size, the Falcon 22 Offshore. With an exterior footprint small enough to maneuver around inshore environments and a ride and stability capable of handling offshore waters as well, the Falcon provides a versatile multi-use platform in a manageable size class. For those looking for a semi-custom offshore vessel loaded with plenty of amenities for the serious angler, we step aboard the Streamline 26TE. Hey listen, if you're considering a blue water boat in the 26 foot range, do not miss seeing the Streamline 26. And we look at an offshore center console that provides an equal mix of luxury and functionality, the Southport 30 FE. This was my first time on a Southport boat and my first impression was she was clean and you could tell that it was just good quality. All coming up on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. What's the best boat for you? Whether you desire precision while pulling across the shallowest of flats, the ability to roam a variety of destinations from inshore to offshore, no boundaries while in vast expanses of open ocean, or you just want to create lasting memories with friends and family on the water. Join Florida Sportsman's trusted boating experts as they review the latest from today's most popular boating manufacturers to help you decide which is the best boat for you. Welcome to another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Guys, we got three wildly different boats this week. The first one that we jumped on was the Falcon 22 Offshore. Listen, cats are all about space. You want to put your whole family on a 22-foot boat and seat them comfortably and give them a nice ride? Better check out the Falcon 22 Offshore. And we're also going to be looking at a boat from a fairly new company, Streamline. They brought us their 26-foot model today, and this was the best part of the boat. This is a semi-custom boat, and they really make you a part of the building process. The last boat we look at this week is the Southport 30 FE. Now we've been trying to get a boat from Southport for a couple of years and let me tell you something, I don't think any of us were disappointed with this one. You're right George, I think there's going to be a lot of things on that boat that I'm going to personally love. Let's go check them out. When we return, our hosts take a look at a catamaran with a small blueprint yet able to take on the seas, the Falcon 22 Offshore. But first, let's join Best Boat host George Labonte as he explains the difference between engine trim and using trim tabs in this week's seminar segment. A common misconception in boating is that you can use power tilt and trim on outboard engines to do the job that you really need trim tabs to accomplish. Now that's not really the case and I'm going to explain to you why. Imagine the trim tab is designed to lift the back of the boat. When you deploy the trim tab, water pressure hits it and it lifts the back corner of the boat. A boat with the engine trimmed in a 90 degree angle is neutral trim. If you trim the engine all the way inward, that's negative trim. Applying negative trim to your engine is going to do exactly what a trim tab is designed to do, but you're limited. You can only go so far inward with the engine. An outboard is more designed to trim out of the water, and what that's going to do is push the back of the boat down, and it's going to raise the front of the boat. Now when it comes down to boats that require any kind of trim correction, it's almost universally a need for the bow to be brought down. Most boats are going to ride bow high, that's just the way it is. Now think about how the outboard trim works. If you've got the boat completely trimmed down and you start and get up on plane and your bow is still too high, there's nowhere to go from there by correcting it with your outboard trim and tilt. You're going to need to apply trim tab to solve this problem. This segment brought to you by The Plantation on Crystal River, where southern hospitality meets old Florida charm. The Plantation on Crystal River is a beautiful 50-year-old, 232-acre Old Florida-style resort, offering comfortable accommodations and a full-service spa. Fishing is spectacular, from snook, trout, and reds to big grouper and snapper. On-site activities range from golf to boating, fishing, and swimming with the manatees in the natural springs of Kings Bay. The Plantation on Crystal River Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they step aboard the Falcon 22 Offshore, a fishing-focused catamaran with a spacious layout and features for the family angler. The Falcon 22 Offshore has an overall length of 22 feet 6 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, 
and a max horsepower rating of 300. Built for taking multiple anglers on offshore adventures, she has a draft of 14.5 inches, a dead rise of 24 degrees, a weight of 4,700 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 112 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. Guys, today we're on the Falcon 22 Offshore. Now, this is a nice surprise today. This is a new company, and they are bringing the cat-style boats in a smaller version. Hey, guys, this is the smallest cat we've been on, and we've got a great day to test her out. The wind's picking up a little bit here, so we're really going to get to see what this boat can do. I'm looking forward to it. By the nature of its design, a 22-foot Falcon catamaran hull offers significant additional forward deck space, making it possible to add features and carry a passenger load more suited to a 26-foot monohull. Falcon Boats adds to this the ride of a Morellian Melvin-designed semi-asymmetrical hull and the integrity of a fully vacuum resin infused construction method from top to bottom to create this model, the Falcon Offshore 22. With an exterior footprint small enough to maneuver around inshore environments and a ride and stability capable of handling offshore waters as well, the Falcon provides a versatile multi-use platform in a manageable size class. At the bow, there was an elevated casting platform with a full width bench seat, along with a fold down bench seat and removable backrest only on the port side. I've never seen this before. Being that this is a semi-custom boat, the owner's wife wanted a lounge seat that did not take away from her husband's fishing ability and having that 360 walk around. The storage options on the Falcon are solid for a 22 footer. A forward opening console seat reveals a large dry storage compartment. To port and starboard in the cockpit below deck are a pair of very large insulated fish holds coming in at 340 quarts each. At the helm, you have flip up bolsters. This allows the chairs to act either as a seat or a leaning post, along with a fold down footrest. At the helm, a secondary space behind a rearward tilting hatch exposes the entire electrical and mechanical heart of your running systems for the simplest access imaginable should you need to perform any maintenance. Each Falcon is a semi-custom build using 100% infused components throughout. All parts from the full interior liner and all finished compartments are laminated together and integrated with the hull, forming a solid bond. Top quality hardware from quality friction hinges to Bocatet backlit electrical accessory switches are standard equipment. Behind the helm, we had tackle storage with a retractable cooler slide out. At the stern, there was contoured seating with removable backrest that sat in between two live wells. Now, I personally felt like this design increased the space in the cockpit. Having that contoured seating where it wasn't just straight back really did free up some room. For live bait storage, a pair of 22 gallon live wells at opposite corners on the transom can be supplemented with an optional 40 gallon tank leaning station at the helm. For divers or even just folks who like to jump into the water for a swim, a low transom leading to the engine platform deck offers easy access to a wide stairway style dive boarding ladder for extremely simple water entry that would be especially useful if you're wearing dive gear. Now listen, when a V-hull boat has an eight and a half foot beam, it's measured from the widest part of the boat, which immediately starts to taper to a narrow bow. A cat hull with an eight and a half foot beam carries her width well up into the bow and back toward the transom, creating a much bigger fishing platform. So, if a 22 foot boat fits your lifestyle, but you've got the whole family to make happy on the water, the Falcon 22 Offshore might be exactly the best boat to meet your needs. A production schedule of as little as six weeks from order to delivery is attainable on your own personal custom build. This efficiency also enables Falcon to be capable of offering a truly custom designed and built sport catamaran hull at a very moderate price point. Guys, being on a 22 foot cat today, look at us. The three of us are standing up here on the bow, still plenty of room, and that's that wide beam, and that's what a cat boat does for you. It goes all the way through. I'll tell you what else that beam does today, Lori. Think about when we were drifting in that inlet chop, that three to four sloppy stuff. What stability for a little 22 foot boat. I mean, it was as stable as 30 foot boats I've fished on. Oh, you're right. Stability is a great attribute to a cat but so is real estate. And if you want all the real estate you can get in a 22 foot package, 
The Falcon 22 Offshore is a boat you got to see. When we return, our hosts step aboard a boat built to spec for the serious family angler, the Streamline 26 TE. This segment brought to you by Ingle, the best performance coolers on the market. Some of us, well, we're just not meant to be around other people. We're just fine with our own company. No distractions, quiet, but this is my time. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they take a closer look at the Streamline 26 TE, a fishing-oriented center console with a personalized layout. The Streamline 26 TE has an overall length of 26 feet 10 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 600. Built with a serious angler in mind, she has a draft of 18 inches, a dead rise of 22.5 degrees, a dry weight of 5,700 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 150 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. Well guys, we get the pleasure of spending the day on a new company boat from us. We haven't ever seen a streamlined boat, but Lori, you've got a little history with this company. I do. At the Miami Boat Show, I was walking down the dock and this boat caught my eye so much, I went back and grabbed a brochure. I never do that. We see so many boats. I like the way she looked. I can't wait to see how she runs today. And you came and got me and I felt the exact same way. The boat's very eye-catching. She's got great eye appeal. But I'm in love with 26 center consoles. And this one is just exactly what I've got in mind when I think about the things I like about a 26-foot center console fishing machine. Many builders offer you the chance to choose between options on a boat to suit your needs. In most cases, it's a matter of checking boxes to select your preferences. Streamline Boat starts with a production hull mold, allowing each buyer to actually lay the boat out to your exact specs with their input. Our test model was designed as a classic forward seating offshore center console with bench seating in the bow that doubled as insulated fish holds. A shallow insulated box met the foot of the forward console seat at the center deck. The forward console seat lifted upward to reveal a marine head and plenty of dry storage. The console was shaded by a nicely finished two-tone hardtop with five overhead rod holders and taco outriggers. On the helm face, a large black acrylic panel featured a pair of 12-inch MFD units with room to spare. For helm seating, side-by-side -side Lebrox captain's chairs sat above a leaning station cooler frame on a sliding track. Now, we forgot the cooler today, so we used the bow port side insulated box as our cooler and left this space empty, which was great because I threw all the bags in there and they were out of the way and they all stayed dry. A pair of five foot long insulated fish holes to port and starboard in the deck filled the cockpit and a 45 gallon live well across the center transom gunnel was flanked by fold away seats in each corner. The beauty of the rear seats is that they're so simple and yet in typical streamlined fashion, so functional. They are a thing of beauty. You can fold them down to create a battle station for fighting a monster or ride in total comfort on the best place on any boat to ride. The weather on this day had me doubting whether we'd get offshore on the streamline. Unaffected by the breaking waves in the inlet, we decided to push east and finish our test. We powered through a stiff 20 mile an hour breeze easily, quickly caught a handful of nice kingfish for the smoker, and despite the less than ideal conditions, the boat ran and fished very comfortably. You know it's funny sometimes how deceptive numbers can be. I've fished tons of 26 foot boats and with an LOA of 26 feet 10 inches and an 8 foot 6 inch beam, the Streamline 26 just plain feels bigger than most 26s. In fact, she feels plenty big enough to be an offshore weapon. Spending the day with the owner made it obvious that Streamline takes great pride in each boat and he emphasized the fact. Each hull has its own personality due to the unique layout of every model they build. Describing how the crew at Streamline Shop comes to identify every boat by the individual owner's name demonstrated one of the benefits of taking on a truly custom project of your own. Hey listen, 
If you're considering a blue water boat in the 26 foot range, you better find one. Do not miss seeing the Streamline 26. She's not only a great boat, but she may well be the biggest bang for your buck in the boating business. When we come back, our hosts check out a boat designed with comfort and luxury in mind, the Southport 30 FE. This segment brought to you by Yamaha. Reliability starts here. Your time on the water is precious. You return season after season to make unforgettable memories, fight a few fish, reconnect with friends, and recenter yourself. If you count on having this time, you need an outboard you can count on to power it. That's why boaters stay with Yamaha for the long run, for life. They know reliability starts here. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Let's join hosts Lori Hargrave and George Labonte as they discuss various uses for bean bags on the boat in another seminar segment. Young lady, you look pretty comfortable there. Looks like you've got this uh, sandbar routine mastered. Well, we all know that, George. <laughs> but I do have the bean bag chair mastered as well. What people don't know is you get a bean bag, you think you need that for long offshore runs. Not in my family. We actually take them when we're going to the sandbar. I don't have transom seating. I literally throw two bean bags on the deck. Kids have a seat because it provides an extra seat that we don't have. And two, George, when I get to the sandbar, now it provides me seating off the boat. We literally take them off the boat and that's our seat for the day. These bean bags from Ocean Tamer, not only are they UV resistant, mildew resistant, but lifetime warranty. Who doesn't need that more than anybody? Me. Also, George, these bean bags are really lightweight, which is nice when you get home at the end of the day, you just toss them off the boat, rinse them off, and you're good to go. Next, let's join our hosts as they check out the Southport 30 FE, a center console designed to provide luxury for anglers and their family. The Southport 30 FE has an overall length of 30 feet, a beam of 10 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 700. Engineered for trips to the blue water or relaxing pleasure cruises, she has a draft of 21 inches, a dead rise of 22 degrees, a weight of 9,000 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 232 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. Guys, today we're on the Southport 30. FE. Now, FE, I don't know what that stands for. Come to find out, family edition. I love it. Oh, I'm sure you do. I haven't focused on that. My focus has been on the interior layout of this boat. I promise you a hardcore blue water fisherman laid it out. I agree with you, Rick. And you know what? We've been trying to get our hands on a Southport for a few years now. The day's finally here. And what a model to start with. What do you say we get going? The classic style of a C. Raymond Hunt and Associates design married with the stability and sea kindliness of a 30-foot vessel sporting a 10-foot-6 beam defies tradition in the southern boat market. But you won't need to go far on the Southport 30 FE to realize this down east shop knows plenty about boat building. Southport 30 FE is a combination of style, rugged dependability, fishing features, and family comfort. Southport has mixed each of these ingredients to make this model a top tier boat in the 30 foot range. Southport's come to us from Maine where it pretty well stays rough in the ocean and then it gets rougher. And I can tell you that the big Carolina flare and rock solid construction means the Southport 30 FE is designed to be the last boat you'll ever need. The ride on the Southport 30 FE rigged with twin Yamaha F300 power was stable and confident and easily overshadowed the 25 knot east wind we experienced while offering a soft ride and efficiency between 1.8 and 2.0 miles per gallon. That's cruising at 30 miles an hour with a top speed of 50 miles an hour. The spacious layout at the bow made it easy to fish, entertain and relax. The lounge seats at the bow were the perfect length and width. They were not too skinny where you felt like you were gonna fall off, and they were not too bulky and wide where you couldn't fish around them. This also allowed plenty of walking space up to your anchor locker. The bow seating also provides storage underneath and can be converted into a sun pad or casting platform with the filler table and cushion. 
The console and helm take full advantage of every inch of usable space to create lots of storage and a private head below. At the helm face, you'll find room enough for twin 16-inch MFD units and all of your necessary instrumentation. A pair of top quality and extremely comfortable LeBrock helm seats are independently installed for the helmsman and companion. A unique design for the acrylic windscreen allows Southport to cleanly mount this glass with a very discreet hardware setup and a subtle curve and it follows the shape of the console face. The helm had seating with flip up bolsters and armrests along with a tackle storage area and my favorite part was the tilt out garbage can on the side. To port and starboard flanking the helm station are a pair of large fish boxes in the deck to complement another transom kill box alongside a live well on the port corner, while the starboard transom corner offers passage to an extended transom fantail. This allows easy transit around the engines for anglers. The fold-away aft seat is another great use of space. This provides you with either more fishing room or more seating. A large access compartment to build system sits at center cockpit deck and a fold-away bench seat rear spans the transom. For diving and swimmers, a side opening dive door to starboard features a sturdy polished boarding ladder. You know, when it comes to calling a boat design classic, I can't define it, but I know it when I see it. And the Southport 30 certainly has classic Carolina styling. She's a gorgeous fishing machine with a ton of cockpit room and plenty of freeboard to keep big waves from joining you on board. Guys, this is my first time on a Southport boat and I really enjoyed it. But what I loved the most about it was it being the family edition boat. That it was. They built this for the family to be comfortable. There's no way you can't be comfortable on this boat. You're right. I'm so happy we got to spend the day on this boat. I was expecting a really rugged, seaworthy kind of fishing boat. I was not really expecting so much luxury and such great finish work. What a boat. I was astounded at all the different influences that went into this boat. The Carolina Kill Box, the bow seating up here, but everything on it was just epic quality. If you're the kind of guy that demands quality in everything you have, you have to see the Southport 30 FE. Those were three phenomenal boats. But guys, I got some sad news. We're kind of coming down to the end of the season, but we still have three more boats for next week. Hey, if you'd like any more information about those three boats or any boat you see on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, visit us at the web at floridasportsman.com. Or we'll see you next week on another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Make sure to join us next week on Florida Sportsman Best Boat as we take a look at the Black Tip 18, the Seaborn FX22, and the Release 29.